Hi, I'm Owen. And I'm Lynn. We're Van Trekking Lifestyle, and in today's Wednesday video, we're going to talk to you about the pros and cons of trying to camp for seven straight days in a Travado 59K. And we're going to start right now after this intro. Ready to go somewhere else? <laughs> So Lynn and I had a few expectations coming into this, but we didn't have a lot because the longest we'd ever dry camp before was just three days. In those days, we were moving every day, so that was the longest period we had. So why in the world did we dry camp for seven days? Well, the first thing is that the state parks are actually filling up pretty quickly and it's really, really hard to make reservations. And as we've said before, we haven't made any. We're just kind of making them as we go. The, the seven, further south we get to. The further south we get, exactly. And we wanted to save a little money. And then also it's because of the adventure of, you know, seeing if we could do it or not. We got it. Oh, so when you dry camp for seven days, you have to learn <laughs> you have to learn to live off of the batteries. And you have to learn to deal with the bugs. You know? yeah. So what was it like to live for one, two, three, four, five, seven nights and live off of just the batteries in the Travada? Well, the nights got a little hot, especially before we actually turned in and tried to go to sleep. It's pretty humid here in this part of Florida. And had we been on electricity and had a full hookup, a lot of those nights we would have run the air conditioner to cool it off a little bit. But, that being said, we were able to watch all the TV we wanted to, which is not important to us, but it is one of the things that we do when we're out. We watch a little bit. Uh, we watched uh, two Carolina basketball games. They won one of them and lost one of them. And we watched a lot of episodes of MASH, which is our show we're watching right now. We used the Keurig to make coffee every morning because it will run off the inverter. That's a good thing. We also kept up with all of our YouTube favorite channels, both on our iPads and on the TV. So all in all, even though we're living on the batteries for seven days, there wasn't a lot of difference. The only really big thing was we had to learn to deal with the temperature change inside. And it was somewhat a little bit stressful having to always look and see what the battery levels were. So what did we do to use less power? We cooked less during the day, which means that we ate power bars, breakfast bars for breakfast. Um, we also never used the fans during the day unless we were leaving Maggie in there while we were going for a walk or something. We also installed the back door screen for the very first time and we used it. And man, it helped a lot. The ventilation is awesome when you have both back doors open and the screen keeping the bugs out. We also kept the door open and kept the little screen on the sliding door closed to keep the bugs out and help with ventilation. All the other windows are open as well with the screens in place. In other words, it's airing out as much as it can, but it's still 88 degrees inside the van right now. When things get really hot, We'll start the motor, turn on the air conditioner, and cool things off in the van. And it works really, really well. <laughs> we'll also start the engine to top off the batteries every night before we go to bed. And we'll start it in the morning if things have drained too far. So that it can quickly top off the batteries and give the solar a chance to completely do what it needs to do during the day. So we turn the inverter off during the day as well, so we're not using any more power than we need to. And even though we would love to be able to sit in here and enjoy the view, we keep the shades up, so it'll keep the temperature down. Lord, I don't know what it would be if it were those things were open. It's 88 now. It'd probably be 95 in here, which but means later it's going to take longer to cool off. But we're outside enjoying the view. Yeah, we are. Let's go back out there. And even though it doesn't take a lot of power, during the day when we're trying to make as much use of the sun as we can, we always turn the max air fan off. So no fans are running inside. We need to get out of here, it's getting hot. 
so how did our 200 watts of solar on the roof and our two 100 amp hour AGM batteries do in this situation? Well, the first day that we got here, we parked in what we thought would be a great place. It got a little bit of sun, but it was pretty shady. We had really great neighbors and we thought we were just in a perfect place. But after a couple of days, we realized that the solar wasn't doing very much during the day and that we needed to move. So then we moved to what we thought was going to be a perfect place as well. Lots of sunshine and the solar panels are happy, happy, happy. But we're hot, hot, hot. And, and so is the van and so is the refrigerator, which is taking a lot more electricity to keep cool. So we're not really sure that being in the sun is having a big benefit compared to being in the shade. What we have figured out is in a perfect world, we would park the van in the shade, we would stay cool, the van would stay cool, and we would have 100 or 200 watts of solar that's portable that we could plug into the side of the van and point it at the sun all day. See, when you do this, you learn. And that's one of the things we've learned. But the solar, for the most part, has kept up with our battery consumption. So that's a real big plus for the Kubota. Wow, just look at those tank levels. The fresh still has a third. The gray tank only has used up a third. And the black tank has only used up a third. Seven days. How did we do that? Well, we used the bathroom in the comfort station that's right over there, not in the van. We also wash our hands with foam and soap. When we wash dishes, we only use a little bit of water. And other than flushing the toilet, that's the only thing we use the fresh water for. And the biggest culprit for using up both fresh water and filling up the tanks is taking a shower. So guess what? We have a shower here. We hiked over to the shower when we felt like we just had to take a shower and we used their facilities. When we didn't feel like we needed to go there, we would take what I call a passable shower with the adult wipes. They work pretty good. I'm okay with doing that most of the time, but then again, Lynn doesn't like for me to just do that. So how is the camping different when you're dry camping compared to when you're hooked up at a state park or a national park or even a private park? Well, first of all, the cooking. Lynn's going to tell you about the differences in how we cook when we're not hooked up to electricity. So the cooking wasn't that much different. Um, I might have made quicker meals. We made omelets for breakfast. We had a lot of breakfast bars for sure um, because it did get hot in the mornings. We uh, grilled out some. I did use the Instapot one night which was found out that it runs on the inverter which we were really surprised and excited about. But we did run the generator at the same time too just to make sure that it didn't run down the batteries. And we also grilled out several times on our flat pack grill, which is always good for me because it's less work for me, more work for me. Actually, we only went out to eat one night, so we actually cooked six nights here. All in all, it wasn't a bad experience as far as cooking is concerned. Well, the cooking wasn't much different, and the activities that we did during the day, they were about the same as well. We went on hikes, we went on bike rides, we walked Maggie, we sat around and just took in Mother Nature. And we stayed outside in this room. The room helps a lot, it keeps the bugs off. We also purchased the thermocell that supposedly keeps a 16 by 16 area free of no seams and mosquitoes. And while we have not seen any mosquitoes, we have swatted a few no seams in this time. How's my hair? Look okay? Looks good. Okay. So when you're out in the middle of nowhere like this, one of the things you can do is concentrating on making modifications to your van. We did just that. We did a lot of what I will call Gary mods. If you hang around a bunch of Travado owners for long, you will get mod envy because Gary showed us his modifications and I became a little jealous of the things that he had done. So we put a wire shelf over our door to put shoes and lots of other things in and that was a really good mod. We opened up the storage compartment on the passenger side by removing that wall and that gave us another three inches to put another e-bag there and in the very back underneath the wall storage we took out that false wall which exposed three or four inches more all the way back that we could put a lot of things in there and really gave us a lot of room it's been a good week to just hunker down and to concentrate on doing modifications to the van 
We'll end this up with a discussion of the pros and cons of trying to do seven days of dry camping in a Travado van. So what are the pros? Well, the biggest, the first and the most important, the biggest pro is it's free. <laughs> Zero dollars. <laughs> that means a lot. And that, another pro is that the views are beautiful. We're out in the middle of nowhere, so that means there's a lot of nature. So for free, you get to look at nature. Another pro is we felt really safe here. I think we're around a lot of like-minded people, and they all seem to have the same thing in common. And uh, safety is a major thing. I think another pro is that it does have facilities. Um, it has two bathrooms. It has uh, Shower. showers, and it has a uh, trash can, a big trash can where you can get rid of your trash. Those are big things. Yeah, even though the bathrooms may be a con for the men's section. Hmm. Men are just dirty. Hey, how do you get out of here? So in conclusion, what have we learned? I think we've learned that we can stay seven days anywhere we want to. We're a little bit mindful of the tanks because we have pretty small tanks on our Cravada. We've learned that dry camping at Dupuy Land Management, we've learned that the work associated with dry camping does not come with the benefits usually that you get from boondocking. In other words, we're in the middle of a campground. In fact, we've got less privacy here than almost all of the state and public campgrounds that we've been to. So you don't get that, hey, I'm off in the middle of nowhere feeling that so many advertise about being out west. You're not going to get that here. The 59K is set up nicely for dry camping. Maybe if we had a 59KL, which is the lithium version, it would be a little better, but it wouldn't be 100% better because so much of what has to happen while you're dry camping has a lot to do with your tanks for fluids. And those tanks are the same. So this worked out for us for staying here for seven days, but you know, the, re the results may vary from person to person and also from place to place. So just keep that in mind. So how about you guys? Some of you I bet are pros at staying out in the wild like this and not having electricity or any facilities. If you don't mind, Tell us what we've done wrong. Tell us what you think we should have changed and done differently. And if you've got any tips to share with the people that watch this channel, leave them in the comments below and let us know what you feel about it. And let us all learn from your experience because, like we said, this is our very first time trying to stay seven days in anything. And staying seven days in this little van is a little bit different than the folks that stayed seven days over here from New York that have 120 gallons of fresh and 120 gallons of gray and 80 gallons of black. Uh, we could do that pretty easily if we had tanks that big. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching our Wednesday videos. We try to do these every Wednesday. And we try to talk about things related to our Travado when we do it. We hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy following our journey. If you do, click on the subscribe button down there and click on the little bell notification. And stay connected to us as we travel around in our Travado. See you next time. I have found out that I do not like bugs biting my legs. <laughs> I have found out that I do not like being hot. <laughs> I have found out that I don't like it when Lynn figures out that she doesn't like it when she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> I have found out that when it's hot like this, I wish I'd paid attention. When we were walking through Walmart a couple of days, I came across a sign that had these little devices up and it said dryer balls. And I wish I'd bought some of those. Seriously, we have found out that while you can live at home in a big sticks and bricks house with someone that you love, when you're in a van and it's 88 degrees and you're spending so much time outside and you're spending so much time cooped up in there trying to make things work, you have to really like somebody, not just love them, but like them in order to be happy doing this lifestyle. You like me? <laughs> not Sometimes. Right now. <laughs> I didn't like you last night when I was making up the bed and it was 80 degrees. my freaking fault. I'm trying my best to help. <laughs> I actually helped you. I came in and turned the, the engine on and got you it cooler. You did, and you put the uh, pillowcases on the pillows. Mine came off the... <laughs>
<laughs> Maybe I didn't do that right. Uh, well, we'll see you guys down the road. Thanks for watching us.